Hey ladies, welcome to the Bus Mob Podcast, a breast and body positive resource that was created for the extraordinary women of Bus Mob. Now, if you aren't familiar with Bus Mob, we're a community of kind and supportive women who are really just cheering each other along on our booby journeys. Now you can join us for free and connect with thousands of other ladies at busmob.com. I'm your host, Jenny Eden, and I'm joined by one of my favorite people, Greta Nance, and we have such an exciting show for you today. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose the right size implants for your breast augmentation. Now I know a lot of women talk about this before their breast augmentation because it can be really daunting trying to figure out what's the right size for me, especially when you don't know what it could possibly even look like. Mm-hmm. I know that was tough for me, it's tough for a lot of women, especially in bus mob. But I do want to throw out there, we're going to be talking about a couple of tools to put in your tool belt to help you decide what the best size is for you. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to be saying things like CCs, and a lot of you might not know what that is. CC stands for cubic centimeter, and that is how you measure an implant. Let's pretend this is an implant. If you're listening, you can't see it. But I have a boob in my hand, <laughs> and what it's filled with is measured in CCs. So let's uh, bookmark that in your brain. It's like the volume, yeah, right? Yeah, the volume of the implant. Got it. So we'll be throwing that term out, CCs. So that's what it means. But looking at the spectrum, like when I think about having a consultation, like you're not going to really be focusing on what size to pick at mm-hmm. first. It's really what your conversation is going to be at your pre-op. So I wanted to kind of get that on your radar too. You don't have to have everything figured out before your consultation because you're going to learn so much during the consultation. Yeah. I used to tell women the consultation is like to determine what surgery you want Mm -hmm. and if you're with the right surgeon. And then at your pre-op appointment or your appointment that's before surgery, that's when you figure it out. Right. Like if you tried to decide everything during your consultation, you would be ridiculously overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And another thing, like some surgeons, they want to have full control over like what your CCs are going to be. And then on the other end of that spectrum, it's like, well, no, I want you to have, you can pick it. So it's like, no, I want to pick it versus no, you can pick it. But there's also a mid-range where it's more conversational. Like some surgeons are like, well, what do you want to see in the mirror? What's important to you? Show me some pictures. So again, this is going to be a wide spectrum of what your experience might be like. But we're going to give you four really great tools to put in your tool belt to help you decide what size is best for you. Mm-hmm. I do think it should be a conversation. Totally. Like it definitely, I should not pick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am not a surgeon. I should not pick it. Mm-hmm. But it definitely, it's my decision. Ultimately, it should not be driven by the surgeon. It needs to be a conversation. Mm-hmm. I used to find that this was more helpful for women or they didn't struggle with what size should I be who had breasts at one point in the past. Like their breasts had gotten bigger while they were breastfeeding and they liked that and then they went away. They they would come in and go, I want those back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they actually had a photo when they were breastfeeding and they were like, this is what I want. I found it was, it's been tougher for people like me who never had breasts Mm -hmm. one day in their entire life to envision what that would look and feel like. Mm -hmm. So that was a much longer conversation and a lot more nervous to go, okay, like, hey, this is going to add weight. This is going to change the clothes I wear. I mean, there were just so many more unknowns. Mm -hmm. So these tools, I'm so glad we're going to talk about it because it was probably the thing that took me the longest to get over that hurdle of this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Like money, I was okay with that. Recovery, I wasn't worried about that. But like what would I actually look like and how big do I go was what took me the longest. Yeah. For me, like my first breast augmentation, granted I traveled pretty far south, but when I got there and I met the surgeon, I had in my mind, okay, I'm going to get 550 cc's. This is is what it's going to look like. I'm going to get high profiles. And then it was the surgeon on the other end of the spectrum where he's like, I'm going to see what fits best when you're asleep, and this is what you're going to get. So I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, The tools we're going to be talking about, I didn't have any of them Mm -hmm. when I first went in for my first breast dog. And so I woke up 375 cc's, moderate profile, completely different than what I thought I was going to get. I was happy because I had breasts, but I ended up going back to get a revision later on at Amelia Aesthetics and got the size I wanted. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of... Like, it's the surgeon, you know, I should trust him. But again, like, if you have an idea, a lot of people, you know, their phones are full of photos, like, mm-hmm. their wish pics, and I want people to have the confidence. Like, show show your doctor what mm-hmm. you like. Tell them what you're envisioning. And especially if they are one of those bookend surgeons where 
they want to have control or no control over size, it's still important to like voice what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did have complete trust in my surgeon yeah, I just did a really poor job articulating what I wanted so I truly do believe he gave me what I was describing but I was using the wrong methods to decide mm-hmm. plus again I was so fearful because I had nothing to visualize I was so fearful of being too big than too small because I had never known breasts Mm -hmm. (laughs) like that I aired way too hard on the side of conservative and woke up with two 75s um and again loved them they were beautiful Mm -hmm. I had breasts for the first time in my life but I think seven or eight years later when I got the opportunity to exchange them I went over 100 cc's bigger that gave me the balance and proportion that I finally wanted from from the beginning so what was the descriptor that you said oh my god (laughs) I just had seen these beautiful athletic bodies. And to me, in, in a, I, so I said athletic. I said I want an athletic look. And that, I don't know why. That like in, I mean, God, that was 17 years ago. I was 25 years old. But I just didn't want to look augmented. But I still, I actually did want to look voluptuous mm-hmm. and proportioned. And I wish I would have used those words. Mm-hmm. Because I did wake up with an athletic look. Right. Like I, my body still looked athletic and small (laughs) but really what I wanted was feminine and voluptuous Mm -hmm. and I feel a lot more like that now after having an implant exchange but there was the Vectra the 3D imaging that Mm -hmm. I know we're going to talk about that's number one on the list truly would have changed what I got right well that leads us right into our one through four and number one is Vectra Mm -hmm. and if people out there listening don't know what a Vectra is that is 3D imaging of your breasts where you can actually simulate what you would look like with implants. And for, like you were saying, you had no idea what mm-hmm. it would even look like because mm-hmm. you started out with nothing. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I had an idea. And granted, my first breast augmentation was 10 years ago. And they didn't have Vectra that I know of back then. Or at least, no. for, yeah, wasn't it eight years it ago it came Yeah, out? eight years. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have that technology, which would have been cool mm-hmm. because I had had breasts before, but knowing how big you should go is super daunting so vectra if you can go anywhere and like have a consultation knowing if like when you're calling around say hey do you guys have vectra imaging there because like here at amelia well we have two machines and it is a game changer in nailing down the size you want you can look at different sizes you can look at different profiles different shapes like it Mm -hmm. is so cool and i believe you said like you were here before they had vectra and Mm -hmm. after and the amount of reoperations is significantly less. Yeah. I would say within the first year or two, 20% of women came back to go bigger. Mm-hmm. Usually it was go bigger, not go smaller, um, before we had the 3D imaging. Because again, it was there was times we would just get it wrong. Mm-hmm. I got it wrong by using the wrong descriptions. Um, now that we do the 3D imaging at the consultation, we revisit it at the pre-op mm-hmm. to make sure she's, you know, we print out those images and have them down there the day of surgery. There's no guesswork mm-hmm. anymore. And she feels very in control and that there's not going to be a surprise when she wakes <laughs> up and goes, oh my God, this wasn't what I thought it would look like. Mm-hmm. Because I think what's really neat about the 3D imaging, the Vectra too, that's just the most common one. There are a couple other ones I think is, there's called like chrysalix and some other things. Mm, like a butterfly? They're all, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we don't have that one. The Vectra was the most accurate because it's not Photoshop. Like it is not like an app that just is making your sweater stretch out. <laughs> like it truly stretch. is scientific, which is cool. Mm-hmm. So like Photoshop is one thing, but this is, you know, every implant type, and style and profile and projection is uploaded into this machine, then it takes like a full-on scan, like measurement mm-hmm. of your rib cage, you know, your nipple distance. It's, it's really neat. It shows unevenness in your rib cage, you know, if your shoulder's a little higher than the other. And then it like recommends implants that would fit nicely on your body. Like it's, it's much more scientific than fun. Right. Which is cool. I like how you can also... It shows you the front side, like front mm-hmm. image. You can turn it to the side, 45 degree, upside down, mm-hmm. though they don't do anything when you turn yourself upside down. Yeah. But it's so cool. You can put a bra on it. If yeah. you want to show your friends and you're not comfortable showing them your your full self, like mm-hmm. you can put a bra on there. Yeah. There's Love like a it. modesty tank yeah. top and stuff like that. It is really cool. Um, we include it in all of our consultations because it's just such a helpful tool. Mm-hmm. So I would totally recommend finding a surgeon with 3D imaging 
So the same thing doesn't happen to you that happened to me. Yeah. And I will say, if you have implants and you want to go bigger or smaller, the Vectra won't work. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't believe them. So I went in there one morning and there's a remote. You can do it by yourself. And so I took the Vectra by myself and it does look like a bubble on a bubble, like a like a snowman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who what does Vectra work for then? Like who who can have one done? Anyone who doesn't have implants Mm -hmm. or if you want to lift Like if you don't know if you need a lift or what you would look like with a lift, you can see that with Vectra. And it's cool because it also shows you where like your scar would be, like Mm. the markings. Mm -hmm. So that's neat. Or if you're like, I don't know if I want implants or a lift or both, you can actually see that with Vectra. You can see just implants. You can see just a lift and you can see implants and a lift to kind of see all three scenarios and see what you like best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very cool. Love it. Yeah. Next tool for your tool belt. I wish there was a better phrase for like tool belt. Next, uh, I like a good tool belt. All right, good. All yeah. right, here's here's another. Tool you know, belt, tool I look belt. cute in them. I've you worn do. them before, I've especially worn them. with your Habitat for Humanity mm-hmm. stuff. I love a good tool belt. Uh, second thing we recommend is having a booby guide. And if you don't know what a booby guide is, it is a woman who has the look that you're trying to achieve, and it's really helpful to have a booby guide. These are the women that are probably in your phone that you've saved and mm-hmm. you want to show somebody. <laughs> So, and don't worry, it's not weird to have a bunch of naked photos in your phone because this is like the season of life for it to happen. This is 2020. Right, exactly. Like this is, this is your journey and they will be there for a long time. So having a booby guide is helpful to like show your surgeon during a consultation like, hey, this is what I like or hey, this is what I don't like. And it really gives the surgeon an idea of what you like without having to describe what you like. So let's say you walk in and you're like, I want a athletic look like Greta said don't say that it was a, it was a dumb <laughs> yeah. dumb idea so she came out really small like someone who is truly super athletic would have smaller breasts um for me if I walked in I'm like I want a big voluptuous look and they they could be like okay so you want like a round c and I'm like whoa 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 I was thinking like double d's mm-hmm. so that really helps the surgeon kind of navigate okay you want cleavage you want side boob did you have a booby guide? I've never asked you that before. I did, but they made no sense, okay. you know, as well. It was also almost early internet days, so we would look at Playboy. Oh, And, you right. know, when I just look back on that, my shape was just so different mm-hmm. from what so many of those women looked like. Like, I wore a 38A bra mm-hmm. beforehand, so I had a very wide rib cage. Um, so, but everything in Playboy is these perfectly super petite, I bet they were like 30 rib cage you know or 32 Mm -hmm. bra so everything was much rounder you know so and I knew I didn't want that super round look so I think it was really hard for me to find anyone that I thought would look like me and then show them that Mm -hmm. afterwards that's that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. um what was mine Tina Louise Mm -hmm. (laughs) though my body type is not 85 pounds but I liked her, the way her breasts were shaped Mm -hmm. on her frame. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was helpful in seeing like the proportion I wanted, Mm -hmm. like roundness, full, projecting, all of those kind of good descriptors for me. I think internally too, when women bring in, as a patient care coordinator, Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of booby guides. And honestly, half of it was helpful for us to go, honey child, (laughs) this is not attainable. You know what I mean? But being able to have that conversation up front You know, versus after we already did the surgery and she woke up like that and was like, this wasn't what I expected. We could have that conversation ahead of time. I wish someone would have had that conversation with me, Mm -hmm. you know, and said, hey, actually, given your rib cage and these Mm -hmm. other things, you won't achieve that. Um, So I think having a booby guide is helpful even to know what isn't possible. Right. You know, because I just didn't understand how much rib cage and things like that played into it. Mm-hmm. Like someone should have told me I could not have that look, <laughs> but I they didn't have the opportunity because we were just talking. Right. And like you said, just using a descriptor leaves so much room for interpretation mm-hmm. depending on the person. So I like the idea of having a booby guide and maybe even taking it with you when you do Vectra mm-hmm. to kind of try mm. to manipulate the image to the point where you can try to get to what you like based mm-hmm. on the photo too. Mm-hmm. I just thought of that. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. We should be doing that. I also <laughs> talked a lot with pac- as a patient care coordinator with women, though, about, like, I know you love this look, but let's think about this in 10 or 20 years. Yeah. You know, like, the weight of that implant. Or I just wanted to make sure they had, like, a 360-degree view or mm-hmm. thought process because, gosh, hopefully they will have them for the next 50 years, you know? I often said, 
you can always play them up. Mm -hmm. The bigger you go, the harder it's going to be to play down. You know, I kind of helped to guide women towards a middle range for wherever they were. Mm. I don't mean everyone needs the same ones. Right. I just mean, hey, you can always wear a little bit more of a push-up bra <laughs> and get that look. But in 10 years after you have two more kids, do you want that look picking up at carpool or this? And, and it was like <laughs> – and, and again, maybe – more power to her if she wants that mm -hmm. I just know for myself I found I love the opportunity to play them up or play them down mm -hmm. and having had them for 17 years like I'm glad I didn't go seven or 800 cc's Ooh. 17 years ago mm -hmm. because they would be you know implants don't stop the aging process so where would they be located at that you point would need a lift, or probably. <laughs> yeah I've also had a girlfriend go really large in our 20s and she actually had trouble buying dresses and clothes mm. afterwards instead of the benefit I found was that I can friggin' wear anything now. You know, I can just – nothing needs tailored because my top finally matches my bottom. Because she made her top so out of proportion to mm -hmm. her bottom, she had to buy large everything and then have everything tailored. Ugh. And I'm like, that's just yeah. not fun at all. Yeah. So I used to kind of be like, hey, at least think – around these certain other situations mm -hmm. i know it gets fun right now and it's fun <laughs> looking at all the boobs but like let's think real life because our goal is that you love these forever mm -hmm. you know and they fit into your lifestyle you know whether you gain 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds or have three more kids or become a bodybuilder like we tend to change you oh, know yeah. what our decade is about so you just <laughs> never know so That's think true. long term with mm -hmm. them that is so true Next thing we want to talk about is inserts. Mm. I didn't get to play with inserts. And if you don't no. know what an insert is, that is kind of like, what'd you say? Fair? What do we call it? We call them sizers, sizers as well. Mm -hmm. Sizers, inserts. I've heard both. Um, what are they made of? I have no They're idea. They're like, they look not like rubber. No, no, but They're they look squishy. like squishy gel, yeah. but in a form. Like yeah. they actually fit over I a love small that. It's like breast. like a dome that you yeah. can fit on there. Or you can put it on the wall and... They stick to the <laughs> yeah. wall because there's a little... We should have one sticking back <laughs> That's here. That's a great idea. They're better than just taking a round implant and cramming that mm -hmm. in your bra. Like and what trying, we had to do? Yeah, trying to get a vibe for that because that's not exactly what it's going to look like. So at mm -hmm. least these are a bit more teardrop mm -hmm. shaped that you can, you know, play with usually at your consult or mainly your pre-op to kind of go under your clothes mm -hmm. and kind of we have a mirror in every patient care coordinator's room so usually you do it with your patient care coordinator so it's not weird uh -huh. <laughs> you know but people sometimes have their husband or girlfriend and they're like does this look too heavy because mm -hmm. it's one thing to look at a naked photo but it's another to kind of see it in what like you're wearing that day yeah yeah and I would recommend if your office has those to wear like a sports bra or a kubi and a form-fitting kind of tank top so you can really see the shape as in like the proportion of your stomach so you'll see like your stomach line well you can see the projection of whatever you put in there and i remember when i was playing with them before i put one bigger one in on the left and like a different size on the right so i could look on one mm -hmm. side and then turn and look at the other way and see like which one did i like better yeah instead of putting both the same size in and then changing them out that's a great idea yeah unless you want to take a photo and then compare photos but i found having <laughs> Two different sides of those insert sizers mm -hmm. was helpful just to see what you like best. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Because, again, it, when you look in a full-length mirror, it changes it because you're looking at proportion, mm -hmm. how it fits with your hips, your waist, you know, your height. You take these snapshots of just a naked breast that you have on your phone, and you're like, <laughs> I love these. What if she's five feet or what if she's six feet? Right. Or what if she has big <laughs> hips or no hips? It actually changes the look. Mm -hmm. So I definitely recommend, you know, using those sizers or inserts if you can and then using a full-length mirror like mm -hmm. you were saying – to look at it and god the two sizes that's a great idea <laughs> it's that's fun helpful because if not you just keep going bigger and bigger right, and you're like it looks fine see what the, how big i can get in here yep yeah let's not do that mm -mm. or you can and see what your nose are <laughs> mm -hmm. so do you should you make sure your plastic surgeon offers that i would say in order of like what's most important i would say vectra mm -hmm. is way more superior um but then next would be that mm -hmm. i don't know if a lot of offices have them but knowing that we do, and I got to play with them, they are helpful. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one thing to see something on a screen and try to imagine that looking down. But it, and it's another thing. I feel like they both kind of work very, like, synergistically or symbiotic. I don't know what the right word is. But being able to, like, see it and then 
have it under your clothes at the same time. It's just both two great visuals, I think. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I wish I would have had that. But yeah, we had to shove like an actual implant mm-hmm. into our bra, mm-hmm. which does not shape around your breasts. <laughs> and it just, it looks, it looks stupid. Nope. And I had <laughs> saline implants too. So mm-hmm. that made it even harder to gauge what they were going to look like because it was a hard you know round ball Uh and I'm like no wonder I went so small yeah because everything else was like "Ooh, this isn't gonna look good Mm -hmm. so (laughs) hey that's okay I've got what I want now there you go Mm -hmm. the last tool for your tool belts ladies is a (laughs) this is gonna be a fun one this one's called a rice sizer and if you've been kind of diving into finding the right size for yourself and you're googling like how do I pick the right size you've probably seen a ton of articles on rice sizers and when I was researching it last night, because I wanted to talk a little bit about it, obviously, like we're doing now, um, it said, make sure your rice is not cooked. Oh, my God. And I was like, well, that's a good, yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing to know. I guess you need to tell people that. Yeah, so it needs to be um, dried and not cooked. And don't use a fishnet yeah. like Greta wanted to do. <laughs> I was like, I'll bring in a fishnet stocking. <laughs> Won't work too good. Why no. don't you tell us, like, the concept? Like, I have actually heard of this I remember this being a thing mm-hmm. 17 years ago when I got mine done. I don't think I did it. I didn't either. Because in, it also sounded like a huge pain in the ass and right. kind of ridiculous. I didn't have the patience for it. Yeah, yeah, me neither. <laughs> we're sevens, Enneagram That's sevens. That's true, we are. So mm-hmm. we're like, yeah, it sounds fun, but yeah. I don't have time for that. No. So if you're watching, um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But if you're not and listening, then I will try to be very good at describing what the crap I'm doing. So I have in my hand um, Greta's, Greta's stockings. <laughs> I brought them in. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So here we go. Stockings. And I was reading, you actually, you don't use the sock portion, which I thought what I would have done. Oh, totally. But I don't know why you're not supposed to. I guess because it's already like preformed and uh, it looks weird. That makes sense. So you take the actual stocking and you cut it like a tube. It's like cut a tube out of your stocking. Mm -hmm. You tie off one end like a balloon and then you fill it with rice, uncooked rice. Mm Mm-hmm which I brought with me at 9.30 last night. I was like, oh, crap, the rice, because we were texting. Oh my God. <laughs> so here's a bag of rice. Um, it's basmati. Did you measure this rice? I did not. Okay. So what I was researching, I feel like it's funny. I was kind of opening tabs. I was jumping back and forth. And there is no hard science behind, like, one cup is exactly this or whatever, because it was varying from website to website. Mm-hmm. But generally, it said like one cup is equal to about 250 cc's. Hmm. So it also said like things you need, measuring cup, rice, stockings. I'm like, okay, okay, we get it. So get your cup, scoop out a cup and dump it into the stocking and then tie off the other end. So that's like a 250 cc stocking implant. And then you put it in your bra and you kind of, it kind of forms around because Mm -hmm. it's rice. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the idea of our insert sizers, Mm -hmm. but it's for rice and you can make it at home, which is kind of kitschy and fun. Yeah. So for every cup, it's about 250 cc's. So you can kind of measure out what you're thinking in a cc range and then put it in your rice little stocking and then you shove it in your bra. And I also read that a lot of women do the two separate sizes so they can look again like on one Mm. side and look at the other and they'll take photos. And a lot of women in Bus Mob make rice sizers and share them with each other. Hmm. And if if anything, it's fun because it's if you haven't had a consult yet and you haven't been exposed to like Vectra trying on actual um, sizers, this is fun to do. Yeah. You just all you need is a stocking. I can see the fun aspect. Yeah, I'm trying to not poo poo it. You can you know because it. I don't. It's not science at all. One cup. Equaling 250 cc's sounds very specific. And right. I wouldn't want anybody to get hung up on that. Because, yeah. the, God, that means, what, two cups is 500 cc's? Yes. That sounds like horseshit. You know? <laughs> like, I would not want someone being like, yes, I want 500 cc's, because then that's a larger yeah. implant. So that does sound like fun. I don't know why I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Maybe because it just sounded messy. It sound messy. Or I didn't have rice. Um, but I do agree, earlier in the journey – it would have been fun to kind of at least, I don't know, I always had something stuffed in my bra anyway, <laughs> let's be honest, like toilet paper or anything that I already knew I wanted the look mm-hmm. of boobs. Yeah. So I did not do the rice test, but yeah. it's cool that it exists. I wouldn't, again, like gauge it based on CCs, mm-hmm. but it is fun to be able to have something to put in your bra and take a photo and ask like, 
hey, guys, hey, ladies, do, what do you think? Does this look like it's proportionate? Because mm-hmm. a lot of women do it to find what they like to look proportionate in the mirror mm. and then bring that in to their console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a... That makes kind of, a lot of sense. Yeah, take that picture, compare it to your implant sizers or the inserts, and you can see which size like better. Because I forgot to mention, with the sizers, or is that what they call them? Sizers? Yeah, sizers. Yeah, the sizers, they're actually labeled with the CCs. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that was a thing. I thought it was really cool. So you can see, even if the rice sizers are garbage... You can like compare that projection mm-hmm. with an actual CC sizer. Yeah, I do think those just seem more helpful. Mm-hmm. But I love that I like how cool this is. <laughs> I do feel like, though, backing out of all of this, mm-hmm. it was easy even when I was going through it to get hung up on like one picture or one look. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you experienced this and heard it, where it was like this girl she looks perfect standing in this position mm-hmm. with this tank top on. That's the look I want. It's so funny, even today, you wearing my shirt. <laughs> I'm like, you, you look, your breasts look different sizes depending on what you're wearing mm-hmm. every day. That's true. And so do mine. <laughs> and if I would have been so fixated on this one photo or this one thing. So I love that these are four methods. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I would say people should do two or three at a minimum. So you understand that they kind of look different every single day depending mm-hmm. on <laughs> what bra I'm wearing, depending on what pants whether I'm wearing a dress like yeah. that was hard for me to understand before I had them though mm-hmm. it was like pick a picture mm-hmm. well man we look different you know mm-hmm. and year upon year whether you gain five pounds or lose five pounds change or style it really changes yeah. and so I used to talk to women a lot about again if you go somewhere in the middle you can always wear a push-up bra to make them look bigger or you can always just throw on a sports bra you Squish know them down. to take run a marathon maybe <laughs> you're going to become a marathon runner like Whew. Who knows? More power to as them. long as you went, you you know your biggest you would want to be in the smallest and somewhere in between, mm-hmm. then you will enjoy them all the time. Mm-hmm. But just don't get too fixated on one right. static mm-hmm. image that you want to exactly emulate. True, it just doesn't work like that. It does not. Good call. That that was my grandmother patient care coordinator <laughs> years of talking about boobs 17 years with thousands of women Isn't that's it my takeaway oh i like that like yeah. i'm an implant sage breast mm, implant you should sage. put that on your instagram i will okay thank you those were very helpful like i w- i wish you would have talked me through this <laughs> 17 years ago but yeah where was i 17 years ago probably in elementary school oh my so. god i wish <laughs> <laughs> nope so I wanted to kind of wrap it up as like, what's your next step? Like if you're considering like your size or you're trying to figure out what would look best on you, then you're probably ready for a consultation. Mm-hmm. And a consultation is when you really get your individualized plan, like what's best for you? Because again, this is not a one size fits all, which is awesome. Um, and again, it can be daunting, which is why you need that consult to really meet the surgeon like figure out what your options are and what's really best for you because not like what's best for me would not be best for you. Mm -hmm. And so we would only know that through having an exam with the surgeon, meeting the patient care coordinator and knowing how it's going to fit in your life. So next steps for this, schedule a consultation. Yep. I agree with that very much. You only get to a point where you can do so much research online Mm -hmm. and uh, until coming in and sitting down with somebody Mm -hmm. and actually being like, Oh, yeah. getting the measurements and especially doing the Vectra. Like if you're at that point where you're obsessively saving photos, <laughs> it's probably time for it's to time. go ahead and have a consultation. <laughs> yeah. So next week we're going to be talking about, <laughs> this is going to be fun, vanity and plastic surgery. Is it related? How it's not related? And how it's actually can be totally different. Mm-hmm. And negative in negative. a lot of ways. Yes. Like, And we hear it pop up in lots of different ways Mm -hmm. in conversations we have with women every day and I think it's getting better yes but it's still very prevalent and is tied into guilt and Mm -hmm. tied into all kinds of other things so I'm, I'm really excited to talk about that yeah stay tuned stay tuned